Hi everyone, thank you for coming to hear our talk today. Uh, you need this when using design systems uh, to achieve success. I'm Amber Henry, I'm a project manager at MOFT. I started off my career uh, as a UX designer and work, have worked in Drupal um, sort of website development for 19-ish years now. Uh, today I'll be talking about the core deliverables, challenges and outcome of this project. As you can see, I'm co-presenting with Matt today, so I'll hand over to you. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Matt Commons. Um, I'm a UX UI designer at Morphed. Um, I've been in the Drupal space with design and front-end development uh, for since about uh, 20, uh, 2009. Um, and yeah, I'll be touching on the design phase of uh, this project that we're about to discuss. So the project we're talking about today is uh, for the National Office of Child Safety, which we'll often refer to as NOx throughout the presentation. The National Office for Child Safety was established in response to the Royal Commission into the Institutional Responses to Child Sexual Abuse. We would like to thank NOx today for letting us showcase their site for this presentation. So NOx engaged MORPH to uplift the site's information architecture, visual design, user experience, search enhancements, improvements to their resource library, and to create a support services directory. In this presentation, we'll be covering the restructure of the information architecture, which also included first-hand user testing and the new visual design using a design system. The challenge was that the phase one core deliverables, including the new IA tree testing with first-hand users, and the redesign of the site had to be done in a tight immovable, immovable deadline of just three weeks due to a campaign launch. The campaign was still being created and the content was embargoed. So how did we achieve this successfully in just a short time frame? Next we'll be breaking down these phase one core deliverables and how we achieve this. The Knox website is rich in useful information and resources that needed to be updated and extended with new content to support the national campaign and Knox's broader uh, work. Knox received feedback that the information could be difficult to find and key information and resources were often nested deep in the hierarchy of the site. So one of our first tasks was to review and improve the IA and test it with first-hand users. We reviewed the current IA, made some logical modifications, and then ran a discovery session with the client. The discovery session was uh, quite insightful. It helped us to define the top tasks for each audience group and get into a um, consensus, consensus about the changes to these labels. So we started defining the top tasks. Each task was derived from the perceived priority action, derived from the audience needs and pain points and the site content also needed to address these. Tiny tasks are considered the least important and therefore could be adding clutter and confusion for the user. Top tasks should also be set for a range of audiences. So for a site such as Knox, their audience ranged from survivors and victims, concerned family, friends, educators, colleagues, our support or service providers and researchers. Tree testing is a research method used to evaluate the findability of topics on the website. It consists of presenting the site architecture in plain text labels organised hierarchically. Participants are asked the set of tasks we defined earlier to find something on the site using a deconstructed outline of the site. In this case, we use Optimal Workshop's TreeJack for the tree testing. Uh, the test helped the project team understand if the labels selected for each page of the site can support users in navigating the content and finding the relevant information. The test challenged users with a set of tasks asking them to locate information by navigating through the site tree. <coughs> by recording the pass, they took to complete these tasks, 
We were able to work out how users interpreted the tasks and what labels resonated with them to help them find the nominated destination. Based on the results, we reworked the labels and placement of pages within the site structure. And we also supported some of the users who went down the wrong path by adding links back to the nominated resources. You can see on the screen here that we also introduced a mega menu into the new design. This supported the improved IA and reduced the friction user flows. We created layouts for the priority landing pages with placeholder content, links and promotions. And we kept these unpublished until the release of the content and the campaign material. We'll cover these further uh, in the rest of the presentation. Uh, implementing the IA presented a challenge. As we had a short time frame to work in, we started the modifications and first-hand user testing of the IA in parallel to kicking off the design process. This was to ensure we could deliver the project on time. Some of the content was embargoed as the national campaign was being prepared and other pages deemed important in supporting the campaign were being reworked. This meant that with the new structure, Knox had to rework the content based on the new labels and the purpose of those pages. We implemented the new IA and kept new pages in draft ready for content to be added. Ah, my turn. Um, so let's talk about the design brief. Um, the client was extremely helpful, clear and easy to work with, um, allowing for us to get this job done on time. Um, today we'll be covering some of the clear direction that they provided um, to be able to make this meaningful website for Knox. So one of the things they were very clear on is that what they wanted the design to embody. They wanted it to be clean and modern, bright and approachable, or bright and positive, approachable and inviting, as well as most importantly, trustworthy and safe, which is, you know, for a sensitive topic like child safety, of course, this is a main concern. Uh, they were also very clear on what they wanted the website to incorporate. So they wanted to introduce the national strategy branding across the site in engaging and in, in creative ways. Uh, they wanted to focus on some text hierarchy as well as visual consistency, depth and movement. They're also clear on what they wanted the site to avoid looking like. So they wanted to avoid a corporate static feel uh, they wanted to avoid blacks and greys, sharp edges where possible, and text in all caps. Uh, the client supplied us with a branding style guide, as we're all sort of accustomed to having provided with us uh, with any established organisation. Um, and they outlined the, the colours exactly that we would be incorporating into this new design for the website. Um, you can see some quite vibrant colours as well as some new campaign colours that were provided to us. Uh, we needed to take some careful consideration for accessibility, so we did alter some of those colours from the original colour palette just to make their whole, the whole colour palette from their branding style guide work harmoniously together. Uh, they were all, we were also provided with um, some assets, these beautiful watercolour textured assets from the National Strategy, which is, the, as you heard me mention before, they wanted us to uh, incorporate in engaging and creative ways. Um, you can see that with a document like this, it was you know, largely inspiring to be able to have this beautiful artwork to sort of incorporate into the website. Um, so it was a sort of dream project when we first got shown this, um, this content. Uh, so with that information, how did we approach the design uplift for this project? Uh, as mentioned, the project was completed within three weeks. The first week was for design sign-off, uh, and two of those uh, days of that first week, I was unavailable. So you might be asking yourself, how was I feeling? There's a photo of me. Um, so, but all jokes aside, I'm a, I'm a designer. I'm used to working under pressure, used to tight timelines. Uh, but you may be asking yourself also, why am I sharing that information? And it's just a testament to working with 
an existing design system um, and it being able to achieve such a tight timeline. So what are design systems? Um, I'm sure we're most, most of us here are quite familiar with that, um, but it's a collection of reusable components uh, used to assemble any number of applications. Uh, in today's uh, situation, we're talking about a website, um, but we see design systems constantly in our day-to-day -day lives. We see them on operating systems. We see them with Uber Eats. We see it with DoorDash. We see it with Spotify. All of those apps have design systems in place. And that's just to create a consistency across uh, the, the platform or the, the identity that you're uh, interacting with. Uh, so we're able to achieve this design uplift by uh, using an existing design system. So taking the guessing work out of the equation and basically we had existing, an existing foundation structure um, to work upon and tweak. Um, design systems are informed and they have consistency in place, um, which ultimately saves time if it's already an existing design system. If you were building it from scratch, that's not going to save you time, it's going to take you time. Um, but in this situation, with a design system already in place, uh, we were able to keep, keep things moving quickly. So let's look at the uh, first steps of updating this design system. We started by looking at the existing color palette from the, pre like the old version of the website. Um, so covering some of the areas mentioned earlier, uh, these color palettes aligned with some of the areas that the client wanted to avoid. It had that corporate and static feel. It had blacks and greys, uh, mostly sharp edges. Um, and as you can see here, clearly along the way somewhere, accessibility became a major concern with some of these darker palettes. The headings you can't even read on the uh, dark versions of these color palettes. Some of the button colors have some accessibility concerns as well. You don't need a contrast checker. Um, you can just see visually from a visual test that these wouldn't pass accessibility standards. So using the color palettes uh, that were well, the colors that we were provided with, we were able to establish these new color palettes um, with careful accessibility consideration involved as well. Um, you can see that we're achieving this, uh, avoiding this corporate look and feel. Um, we're applying this clean and modern look for the website, uh, bright and positive look, uh, and also allowing for that approachable inviting all parts of the brief. Um, as on top of that, we avoided the sharp edges concern by introducing quite a lot of rounded corners for this specific design. Um, and you can see we have also added some depth with some drop shadows as well. Uh, then we started to look at the uh, text hierarchy. Um, so whoop, that just jumped a step. Um, so to address the request of giving some extra attention to the text or the typography, um, we applied the new font family um, that was outlined in the brand style guides. Um, I always trip up trying to pronounce that one, so I'm not even going to bother saying it. Um, you can read it on there maybe if you're, t if you're close enough. Um, but uh, an extra bit of consideration was looking at font sizes um, as well. Um, and a clear example of how much just, just tweaking your typography can actually uplift your design. Uh, here's an example from the previous slide at the top uh, was the previous footer. And on the right hand side, there were two meaningful text call to actions. One to contact child, say, oh, to contact triple zero if you or a child are in danger. Um, and another one to get support. Below there is the uh, updated version of the footer that we implemented. And you can see with just a simple treatment of taking that text call to action out of the footer, placing it above the footer and giving it more prominence. Uh, and just a simple treatment of improved typography, font sizes, and um, font family, those call to actions are far more clearer and meaningful. Uh, we also looked at the various view modes, view modes and components available in the current design system, and we gave them an uplift. Um, I'll walk you through some of the key ones that were most commonly used across the site. 
We improved the uh, icon card uh, view mode for, um, and by providing rounded corners and uh, adding a subtle, more subtle, um, softer drop shadow, but to address the request for depth on the site, as well as some improved padding and obviously just the change in typography to improve the overall view of the image card. Uh, I duplicated that slide and didn't remove the last one. Ignore that. Uh, uh, we made minor styling improvements to the stack or image card. Um, basically, same sort of treatment as before, keeping some consistency across the site. Rounded corners, uh, improved drop shadows, padding around the, con the content within the card. Once again, rounded corners, drop shadows, consistency. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, so after reviewing of the, of the site, um, it became apparent to us that uh, teaser images were not being used the same way across all different view modes and certain areas of content were only being used with a specific type of um, a view mode. For instance, they were using big teasers to advertise news content where uh, in this scenario where we have a specific crop, as some of us were familiar with Drupal, we use image styles, we have cro uh, specific crops applied. Uh, in this example here for the small teaser, we had a square crop, uh, which is maybe not ideal if certain bits of content are using a certain image in a certain way. Um, so uh, we actually found that images on every single view mode was not actually adding much value um, and was cluttering the interface. Uh, so we actually made an informed decision to suggest that the small teaser was to remove the uh, teaser image that was assigned to it. Uh, we also were provided with a special use case for teasers, or we suggested a special use case for teasers, the regular teaser view mode, um, for resources. Uh, so we're all familiar with clients having documents, PDFs, and PDFs are not really designed with the mind of what we were talking about before about that square crop treatment um, for, for a website. Um, so we actually made an informed decision to display uh, resources with the full view of that document. Because um, obviously a, a designer that's creating a PDF cover is not thinking about a cropping of a square section of their cover to be used on their website. So we actually made that informed decision to display teasers, regular teasers for resources as the full version of that image. Uh, and also just here is a very clear example of just improved typography spacing and um, rounded corners is just they're very minor changes to this big teaser here. Um, but you can see that the right has a far more stronger presence on the page than the one on the left. Um, the following example here is what we refer to as section content. Now the, one, the version on the left hand side here is actually um, from the old site, however I don't think it was actually being used on the website. Uh, but that functionality existed within their current design system. So you can see here that we're able to actually, with the use of the new colour palettes, um, some improved padding around the container elements and using background images, we were able to make this very bland looking component that wasn't being used on the site and create something far more striking and impactful. And as we get further into the design, uh, you'll actually see this is used quite strongly um, across the project in the uplift. Uh, we also made some improvements to facts, or fast facts and statistics. So you can see here on the left, quite a uh, sort of reserved, more subtle approach. We made on the right hand side here, we made the statistics larger, more bold. We improved some spacing as well as um, introducing a button for the read more section of this component. Um, Another thing that was not being used across the site was buttons. Buttons were not being used at all and I believe that was probably an accessibility concern like we touched on with the colour palette section previously. 
We also introduced a new component to the website, which was an image gallery. Um, you know, not, not amazing whiz bang new technology, um, but it was a new feature to the site. And you can see where we covered with previous components and view modes that helped inform how this was going to be designed. So the, the rounded corners and just introducing the, the color palettes into this uh, new component that was coming into the site. So you might be uh, thinking, that's all great. The, the design, the components, they looked very simple. And how are we going to incorporate the national branding that was outlined in the brief, uh, that the fantastic watercolor assets? So we were able to incorporate these assets by, you, by means of um, background modifiers. Um, we at Morphed are using a module known as modifiers, and they have different types of modifiers. In particular, this one used is a background modifier, a uh, really simple, easy module to use that allows the user or the, the editor, sorry, uh, to upload a background image. You can choose background size, position, um, all those sort of CSS properties all sort of built in and just easily configurable with the UI. Um, and so we came up with these creative ways to introduce the background images. You can see on the right hand side was a more subtle toned down version of these um, watercolors to allow for accessibility as well as coming up with creative ways using this section content um, component on the top left here that incorporates the color palettes to create separation from the more vibrant versions of these background images uh, and we're using the again using that drop shadow to create depth and sort of make the content in these sectioned areas you know heroed mvp well say i say mvp i now realize that means minimum viable product but i live in a sports world where i think of the most valuable player um, <laughs> um and so you can see these different assets are just used in creative and subtle ways to help break the page up and take some of that blocked sectioned design out of the equation, making this site look a bit more approachable and inviting, um, as well as some more additional treatments here of just positive looks and you know making it look very bright and interesting when you're on the page. Um, to address the request of movement, you know, there's, there's many, many different types of solutions and uh, with time constraints involved, uh, we decided to suggest using what is known as a scroll reveal modifier. Just like the background modifier feature we were using, we used the scroll reveal modifier, um, which again, very simple UI for the user to create a scroll reveal event when you scroll down the page, reveals these components in creative ways um, with various different settings available to the editor where you can choose the direction that the item comes in from on scroll, the distance, the duration, delay, opacity, scale, uh, quite a robust uh, set of features. Um, so this was how we suggested uh, incorporating movement into the website. Uh, so the campaign going into the project, um, we knew that the new version of the site was launching with this new campaign. Um, and Amber's touched on this before where the content was embargoed. We had no idea what the content was going to be, but we needed to provide the client with the, this campaign page on launch day. And we were thinking to ourselves, you know, we knew the type of content, but we didn't know exactly what the content. So we knew that we were dealing with video, we knew we were dealing with imagery and resources and campaign messages, but nothing specific beyond that. So it was quite a challenge um, to sort of think of how to approach that, uh, initially at first, when we're thinking about it. However, we were able to take the components that we had already redesigned and just build a page out using those components. And so the solution was to just provide the client with an example of what a campaign page could look like. Um, so you can see here the various different components. Um, also with a campaign page, sort of really highlighting how helpful sectioned 
content could be um, to really bring home a certain message with a powerful image um, and using those colour palettes to eliminate any concern of accessibility. So what was the outcome of the design uplift? A reminder of the old site and what it looked like. It had a corporate and static feel to it. It used a lot of black and greys. And so the final result speaks for itself, I, I believe. It's um, adhering to the brief um, and delivering a clean and modern website, as well as being bright and positive, approachable and inviting, and trustworthy and safe. Um, incorporating the branding, uh, the national strategy branding in um, creative ways, um, and just completely reshaping the uh, website for the National Office of Child Safety. Um, so a bit of a conclusion here is with using the design system in place that really allowed us to get the project done within the time frame, which was not a lot of time at all. Um, using a design system from scratch, as I mentioned before, would be a very long drawn out process. Um, so whenever you would be tackling a project with a design system that you don't actually have yet, um, using a foundation like Bootstrap or you know the Google um, Materials Design or something along those lines would be a great starting point um, as there's already sort of informed decisions for you to build upon from there. Um, bit, of, bit of context was this was my first um, client project with Morphed um, since starting and you know there was, there was definitely hurdles to sort of jump through I'll jump over um, with regards to understanding the design system, um, understanding, you know, different, how the impact of suggesting a certain change to a certain component and how that impacts theming and sort of the way that we sort of overcame that solution was having, you know, lots of continuous um, meetings and just sort of talking it through and working together, as, you know, for some good old fashioned teamwork. Um, and, one final note I would say with working with design systems, which I've found is um, a bit of a problem, well, it's not a problem, but it's a challenge, is you can find a design system sometimes when you're looking at it is not flexible. Um, and it's, you need to, as, as creatives, you need to try and look at it and find creative ways to make it different because you can get stuck in this rut of looking at it and going I can't get I can't see past this box in this project's example we were able to overcome that sort of boxy looking sharp edge feel by using the background modifiers and creating this sort of clean flow on the page um, so yeah so the uplift was completed in time for the national campaign launch uh, yep, there was some early morning starts and late nights to get it done, but by utilising the design system and extending the components and uh, modifiers already available, we're able to achieve a visually appealing result for Knox and their users. Added a QR code here if you want to visit the site. Uh, as the campaign was launching on a Sunday, we approached the delivery of the uplift in stages. So we uh, launched the look and feel onto production four days prior to the campaign launch. Uh, this allowed us to have a bit of time for any final changes, as well as we we're able to like, update and create the page layouts ready for the new content. And these pages were kept in draft until they were ready for publishing on the launch day. So the national campaign that uh, was the big secret throughout this project was one talk at a time and that successfully launched on Sunday the 22nd of October 2023. The campaign could be familiar to a lot of you in the audience. It's been um, broadcasted across a lot of media um, outlets such as TV, commercials, cinema, social media. And in the three weeks following the launch of the campaign, the website had over 120,000 views, which was an increase of 745%. 
So MOFT uh, is extremely proud to have been part of this project as it's such a critical topic. And um, well, I know I was certainly as a project manager, very grateful um, for the teamwork between MOFT and Knox to accomplish this in such a short time frame. So thank you for coming to listen today. Um. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Julia. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess how in three weeks? <laughs> um, I guess more serious question, in, in terms of design systems, how important um, is it, like with your own internal design systems, like you've got something that you're working with, um, but uh, having, uh, you know, prototypes internally that you can look at and go, okay, um, you know, we could use these things coming up, or is it just looking at what the client has and saying, what can we do with that? Well, I mean, we, oh, sorry. Um, we, uh, like, the example of the campaign page is, like, sort of speaks to that, right? Is creating the sort of design out in Figma and having that ability to lay the page out and sort of have that informed. We could also were able to, once the theming was implemented, we were able to build out these pages in the, in the existing site, right, and, and showcase the page and go, here's how it was built. And then you have that informed decisions for the client to look at and review and go, oh, okay, so I can build this page out by looking at it this way. Um, so I've got a couple of questions. <laughs> um, and I guess my, my first question is um, the design system that was that like more convivial or was it actually an already established site with its own design system? Australian government. Okay, so there was familiarity with the developers, right? But it wasn't a tool that they used. So when I look at your presentation and you say it was five days to complete the design and you launched four days before the three week period, that means the dev team built this site in and made all those changes, right? And we did the user testing of the IA too. Yep. <laughs> so how did so? Um, I want to know. I want to know who built it, right? Like out of the team, but I'll ask that privately. <laughs> how did you prepare the dev team to do this amazing amount of work on such a critical, non-negotiable deadline? So I, I know, like the minister had announced, there was no way that that did move. Um, yeah, so that's my question. Um, how much time have we got? So, the it all just had to start. Or like, you know, I mean, normally you kind of follow a bit of a process as you kick off a project. But we had to just start everything all at once. So, the updating the IA had to be done as quickly as possible so that we could get the user tester happening. Um, the design had to start once that was back and available. Uh, we got the dev team working on it as well, like making some of the changes that uh, we knew had to happen, um, you know, for content types and things like that. It was just super fast and, and, and pretty busy. It's, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it, it, there's a, a lot of detail, I guess, went into it. We just had to work uh, a lot together. There was a lot of stand-up time and with Knox, and they were amazing. They were just like reacting super quickly. Um, which it wouldn't have happened if they if they weren't on the ball like that. So, because we had to get them to approve and make decisions, you know, like we need this done today. Yeah. Just going back to that question, pretty amazing for three weeks. Just want to know how large the team was, so how many people were involved, and also how big was that website? How many pages that you're talking about that you had to change? Um. So the team was. Five of us, um, pretty much working on it full time during that time. Whereas you know, everyone's in the team spread across a few projects. Um, Hi, I'm uh, curious about the background modifier module. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to make you do it. But, uh, because I suspect we can't do it on I'm wondering if when you, when people are now um, using that site and from an editor's point of view, adding new content, is that background modifier just sort of automatically built in so that when they build up the page, they get the right background, or how does that work? 
So the background modifier can be applied to pretty much any of the components on the page, and there's probably uh, you can probably add it to multiple sec different sections on the site as well. I believe Knox has it um, as part of the uh, header section as well. So we actually use this uh, look and feel um, setup to dictate different pages in the navigation. So it actually applied the one background for its children pages as well. Um, but yeah, the, the modifier could be applied to any of the components and it's quite um, easy to use and not very difficult to set up. Just wondering how many developers do you have to work on that project in the short term? Uh, just the one. Yeah, I provided some um, front-end assistance as we were going along, um, just sort of identifying things that needed to be changed. So I would just provide, you know, suggested CSS rules and stuff like that, just to help him because I knew that time was so short. All right, so basically we have one back-end developer and one well, I, was, I wasn't doing the front end work, but I was a pri providing assistance for him. But it was the same person doing the back end was doing the front end. Once again, amazing work. Um, did the site already have a design system or yeah. were you sort of analyzing it? Yeah, so the design system was already in place, um, which was why we were able to do what we achieved in such a short out of interest, if it had been a more legacy site without designs, in terms of weeks, how many during that would have added? To, sorry, what was the question? Uh, if, it, if you didn't already have a design system on the website, how long would it have taken to? Uh, <laughs> how long is a piece of string? <laughs> uh, you had a deadline. <laughs> Was the current design system or the previous design system based on known technology like Bootstrap? I believe it was Bootstrap. Well, thanks everyone. Let's thank uh, Matt and Amber.